Previously on Talk That Talk. Ruined musicianship in our programs. Quan, you got it first. I mean, that's, that's kind of tough. Um, I think they influence it, but I don't think ruin it. Um, and I say the reason why I said it is because every band director should still hold their own integrity no matter what. But one thing, even Justin mentioned it on the show, Drumline has taught us several things with certain administration, with certain administrators and administrative aspects. Guess what? They want to be entertained first. Then they want to be taught. And that's just the reality of what we fall in. So I won't quote unquote say fans, but if we put fans as a culprit, we have to tie them with administration. We have to tie them with both of them. Um, but at the end of the day, <clears throat> one thing that we did see that was about that movie that was real, that band director held his integrity for what he believed in. And I believe that when you have a specific standard as a band director, you know, you stand on that hill and you die on that hill. You know, you down there here for musicianship. But like I say, to answer your question, Julian, do I feel like it's a uh, uh, fans influence it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like we've been on the show and uh, PV, you know, when y'all was there, y'all took our entertainment tonight. I got emails later and was like, put it back in the show and it was back in. So that's influence. But that still did not delineate from the standard of Dr. Zachary and that staff. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yes, I think we all can agree that the fans to an extent have, I don't want to say they ruin musicianship, but I think us in an attempt to please fans and to get a rise out of them, what we have seen from bands that are successful at that is simply volume. You know, a lot of fans get excited for something that bumps and is, the loudest thing they've ever heard. Um, so we've had, you know, there's, the bands are out here now trying to achieve that on like every piece that they're arranging, every piece that they're playing, it's got to be loud. It's got to bump. If not, we won't get a rise from the crowd. The crowd's not going to go crazy. The crowd's not going to feel it. Um, and I, But at the same time, I can't just blame it on the crowd because we got to think about the music that's out here. Now, there's good music out here. There's really, 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 really good music out here. However, that good music is not the most popular music. It's not the thing that the people in the audience are all listening to right now. The stuff that the people in the audience are listening to is really simple in rhythm, simple in harmony. And, you know, it's when we talk about bass, drums, you know, so simple stuff. So I think it's several different variables for why mu musicianship, just to say musicianship has dropped down significantly. Um, even since so I was in the band, I was, you know, not too long ago. Let me say that I, I was a rookie, what, 10, 11 years ago or something like that. So um, even since then, man, just what people expect for a band to perform and what they feel like is going to be entertaining to them has has definitely changed. Just the standard of it, you know, other than if you talk about if you're in an audience full of band heads and musicians, that's different. But if you're in your regular football audience where you don't have that that same pool of people that are listening for something impressive uh, you know you got to play your crowd though so uh, I think it's not just the fans I think it's several different variables why musicianship has fallen between our bands so um, I want to uh, kind of go back on one of the things that I think it was you who said it Derek the music right uh, yeah. I just kind of remember being a person back in the 90s, and I was that kid who, of course, I listened to the typical rap music, you know, the Biggie and the Tupac, because that was like large back then, Crucial Conflict. And like, so I listened to all those different groups and, and different people. Uh, but at the same time, I was also listening to, you know, um, Nirvana and red hot chili peppers and you know a lot of those groups at the same time i couldn't tell nobody that i was listening to it because then you be you look like the lame if you was listening to that right but um I, I say all that to say like you said there is good music out there but i think that nobody wants to look like the lame to bring it out and play it because i think that there's a there's an abundance of people who listen to all the things that are available out there all the stuff that does have the musicality out there but nobody 
there are very few people who want to be the first people to step out and play it because they don't want to lose quote unquote fans. I remember back in, back in my heyday of marching that it used to be, if somebody was playing rap daddies all day, we would talk about them because they were playing triads and whole notes all the time. But now that seems to be the norm. You're not getting Jackson state Malaguanas anymore or, um, uh, getaway anymore. You're not getting those anymore. And that used to be the standard and they may pull out one of the rap daddies. Now the rap daddies with the whole notes, half notes, extremely loud euphoniums, uh, mellophones playing in trumpet range, second trumpet range. That seems to be the norm. But is that, is that dictated by the fans or is that dictated by the music? I was going to say, man, it's, it's, it's definitely the music, man. Um, but at the same time, there are certain bands out here that can do what you were saying, play the, the stuff that's not as popular and get away with it, man. But, you know, it's probably five bands I could probably count on my hand that can do that. But that's because they've been doing that. They're known for doing that, you know. Um, most of these other bands, man, they can't, you know, they'll get booed because they're playing something different that nobody has ever heard of. Unless it's, I think band fans do it when, when somebody executes something flawlessly, I think some of them can agree that it sounds good. They may not be too excited about it, but there's only a few bands that can play that, the real good music that nobody knows about and, and still get that, that ride out of, out of you know, their, whoever their audience is. So. But I think you kind of just hit something, right? Like you said that they can play something and the fans won't get too excited about it. Yeah. And I think I think it was Justin who said it on last who put it in the comments on last show. And it may have been Justin and Eddie. Fans and what the fans thinks gets clicks. Right? So for instance, and and I'm just gonna you know, use this as a, as an example, you know, uh, let's say PV plays getaway and they play it very well. Right. And then Jackson turns around and plays a rap daddy with the baritones and, and the, the, the horns and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Right. Who's going to get the most crowd reaction? Depends. <clears throat> uh, now nah, I think you're being disingenuous, bro. No, 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 the, no. The the reason why I say depends is because Getaway is a famous EWF. Like if if you if you no no, and I'm being sincere. If like you find something like within the album that maybe people don't know, and even though it's is is cranking, I mean it. So, but Getaway is a, is a band classic. I but it's a but you just listen to what you said. Mm-hmm. One, you said it was a band classic. Two, you said it is a, a a song that that quote unquote people know, right? We're mm-hmm. talking about this generation of kids. We're talking yeah. about this generation of spectators. Everybody knows in the stone, but if 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 uh, I'll give another band because I don't always want to use PV as an example. Let I, mm-hmm. I'll say it: if Texas Southern played in the stone, mm-hmm. Nobody's going to be like, oh, man, that was sweet. But, oh, dog, they was killing it. No, they won't. They're going to be like, all right, that was nice. Let's crank up, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that 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 literally goes back to what are the fans dictating the musicianship, right? Because if Texas Southern played in the stone or getaway or anything that that has any technical problems with it, they're probably doing it because they want to keep the integrity. Like you said, if you go back to the, the drumline aspect, they want to keep the, the director wants to keep the integrity of the program and the musicianship of that program. Right. But the fans. But I think, but I, so I'm so I, I see the point of view of, of how you're going. And I, and I, so from that perspective, I would agree, right. That the fans do dictate, but what I realized is, but if you're a good band director, you truly need honestly, a, a, I balance of both. So like when, when we marched, so I crab 06. Um Derek, you crab crab uh you was a rookie. Y'all say rookie, what year? Eleven. Eleven. So yeah. that's about, you know, that's that's a little bit of a difference. But the reality of it is this, man. 
I remember a time when I used to look at band clips and the very first thing after y'all played Star Spangled Band and warmed up and everything, people used to battle with marches. Like in the beginning, that was the first thing you heard. Now, granted, everybody low key was playing Purple Carnival, Barnum and Bailey, uh, what is it, Rolling Thunder, something like that. But you would hear that. Then you will go through the games, and then y'all will be playing. So if somebody played EWF, you had to play something that was comparable to EWF with some certain aspects of musicality. I think now, like you say, uh, Julian, with all the rap daddies, bro. What is there to compare it to? A rap versus rap? You see what I'm saying? Like, like that's why I think everybody was so excited about um, like Leave the Door Open and that album because it was the first time in years that we had an album truly of music to that was popular by the masses. So, I mean, I, I see where you're going with it, uh, Jay. And so I, if from that point of view, I would have to agree. But to be a solid band program you're gonna have to have both because you have band you have band heads in that crowd and you have musicians the musicians will be like god damn they pl they played that that's how you get the kids in that's how you get a mixture of both because you need band heads and you need musicians that hopefully overrides that band head culture 